A while ago, one of the most respected and engaging uh, custodian of valorous antique science instruments in the world presented to his fellows antique science instruments lover a pendulum having at the bottom a micrometric screw with a graduated disc. He was puzzled a bit on the role of this micrometric adjustment. The pendulum built in 1855 is still housed in its original box together with the border pendulum and talks loud about the good old times when physics was so much fun. A few weeks ago, another engaging thinker and custodian of antique science instruments proposed a summer pastime discussion on time and its material culture. Although I, like, I lack talents to address interesting topics as time and its material culture, the issue obsessed me many times in life and I decided to present my take. For nothing else but to as a propaganda for my beloved Ni Niagara Science Museum. First, there was the sidereal time. The clepsydra was used to split time in small intervals. The last of a uh, oil lamp or a candle also can be used to measure time. The moving of the shadow in the sun is a good indication of the time of the day. Pendulum would its property to have an oscillation period independent of the mass becomes the main time measuring device until early in 20th century. Piezoelectric, piezoelectric effect is used these days to create a constant frequency oscillation for our worst watches. Recently, a company started selling for $70,000 an atomic worst worst a watch that will miss a second in a few thousand years. The Chesium atomic clock is the most accurate timekeeper these days and produce a very stable exactly three nine trillion one hundred ninety two million six hundred thirty one thousand and uh, seven hundred seventy oscillation per second. With such a clock one will miss a second in a million years. For the old man that I am, 10 trillion oscillation per second is definitely too much. And I prefer to stick with a good old, would be time standard, the second pendulum. Here is a pause main installation to address the effect of different variable in our mechanical pendulum. We installed it in Niagara Science Museum. A cutter pendulum, exactly on top of second pendulum, together with a Torricelli barometer, a dry and wet thermometer, and a quarter second pendulum clock, we don't have a second pendulum clock at our museum, seems to be sufficient to, for good measurements. We can start the two pendulums and watch for the moment when they are aligned. Then we wait in until they are aligned again. In our case, two consecutive alignments are 360 seconds apart. That give us the ability to calculate the period of um, one ped pendulum in rapport to another with an accuracy better than one over 360. Just in the above paragraph, I said that chesium clock is too much for me and this is why I prefer to stick with the pendulum clock. But indeed, the atomic clock is much different and much more complicated for the pendulum clock, the time unit determining device is the second pendulum. A mechanical a mechanism produce, uh, is uh, producing a mechanical push for the short period of time at the right moment and makes the pendulum to keep going indefinitely. 
there are quite a few errors introduced by the effect of temperature, altitude, atmospheric pressure, and local gravitational acceleration. For the atomic clock, the jump in the last electronic from electron from one peripheral orbit to another is the time unit determining oscillation. A microwave generator producing an uh, excitation that makes the oscillation going indefinitely. Very similar with a pendulum, although in the case of a tonic clock, the oscillation period is enormously stable in unaltered by temperature, pressure, etc.